Ivano Say's work celebrates people. A conceptual artist and designer, Ivan thinks critically about ever-present elements of life, like hair, fabric, and skin. And she invites spectators to do the same. This is her story. I come from the Ashanti Kingdom in Ghana, and that is located in the middle belt, right in the heart of Ghana. When I moved from Ghana to St. Louis, I ceased being this Ashanti person. I became this black person, you know, this black female, this black immigrant female, this black short immigrant female, and the list goes on and on. And so I realized right from the onset that physicality was something that was really important to the American community. And I, I did I did a lot of work. My earlier work was based on that. I remember one performance that I did where I covered myself in white pigment and covered myself in black pigment, and I was almost wiping through those layers of paint. Um, but that also transitioned to me collaborating with diverse people, people in the community, people on Webster's campus to birth this body of work called Infinity. I remember when I was in grade two in Ghana, I would make all these bright colors and my teacher would say, you know, you're overpainting it because it's, it's gonna turn black. And so I remember that even uh, in grade two, he said that. And so I was like, well, that's really cool because when you combine all these colors together, you do get a form of a, a darker hue. And so I borrowed that metaphor when I was still an undergrad at Webster and invited a community and invited professors and invited students in to create that body of work. A lot of my work is about a color, complexion politics, standards of beauty, questioning those boundaries uh, of those things that have come to be systems and finding ways to encourage people to accept the other and to respect people that are different, either in, in physicality or status. You know, one day I, I started thinking, wouldn't it be absolutely amazing if you could be Asian through a blouse and an Irish American through some sort of skirt or, or trousers. And that was when From Utopia With Love was born. And so over the years, I've been taking photographs uh, anytime I travel of, of people that I, I come into contact with of their skins, of different parts of their body. I'm fascinated with moles, fascinated with hazel eyes, brown eyes, black eyes. And I've been photographing different parts of that. So do not run away from me when I you know, approach you and I, I, I tell you you have a pretty nose and I would like to uh, take a picture of it because I, I do that often. It's, it's not weird, hopefully. <laughs> and one of the things I absolutely love is when people blush the turning of that different color. I know blushing is supposed to be an embarrassing thing, and you know, but just that, the fact that that happens, it's amazing. Again, it's, it's, it's really about the celebration of, of, of people. One of the things I find fascinating about clothing is that it in itself is a membrane. It is a skin, right? So from Utopia with Love, you can think about it as a redundancy of skin, as this kind of, uh, outbursts of the physicality of skin, where the first skin is, of course, the photo um, that's printed on it, the second skin being the actual membrane of the clothing, and the third being our actual skins. It, it all started in Geneva when I, I walked into uh, an area and saw this really fragile bronze sculpture uh, of, a, of a female, a young female, and her name was Jeanette. It was actually made by a, a French artist it, to commemorate a building uh, that she was facing. And I had these fabrics that um, I had been researching at that time. And I almost instantaneously just started to wrap her body. You know, and for me, it was thinking about uh, the fact that, you know, such a, a frail young, uh, you know, a young woman, um, just one young woman, you know, facing this huge building. Her body became almost this objecthood that I, I found a, a strong sense of sisterhood to clothe her. The work is not complete unless I unwrap because it's important to return 
her into that original state. It's also about reversing uh, this power structure. The fact that I am a colonized rap and a colonizer. The fact that black uh, subject is given back to a white subject. Usually the narrative is the opposite. And so even in my work, I'm again trying to challenge those power structures on a day to day. I wish that someone would, would have told me earlier that I do not need anyone to legitimize my voice, right? That your voice is valid. My voice is valid, your voice is valid, it too is valid. And to really live in that and believe that it is. One of the wisest things that anyone has told me, and Denise Ward Brown, um, my professor back at Wash, she said, you know, Yvonne, you are limitless and do not let anyone limit that limitlessness. To check out more local artist stories, visit ninet.org slash pieces.